Films in Focus with David Sterrett is underwritten by The Movie House, your destination for first-run Hollywood and independent movies, and a digital portal to the Met Opera, National Theater Live, and special events worldwide in Millerton, New York, and on the web, themoviehouse.net. David Sterrett is the editor-in-chief of the Quarterly Review of Film and Video, contributing writer at Cineast, film professor at the Maryland Institute College of Art, Robin Hood Radio's very own critic and guide to as I like to say, all things cinematic, he joins us weekly. The films Sundown, Playground, and Who We Are, A Chronicle of Racism in America. Sounds like very, very light fare, David. How are you? <laughs> Doing okay, Joe. How about you? Will not complain. Good, good, good. Well, uh, you say uh, I deal with all things cinematic, and I guess that's what we have today, all things cinematic, because these three films are very different from each other, and they're all interesting movies, although of varying degrees of cinematic quality, I must say. But let us begin with Sundown. Uh, Sundown is uh, written and directed by Michel Franco, who is an interesting director who seems to like very offbeat uh, kinds of uh, disturbing subject matters. And in this case, we have a film which stars, uh, well, the very, very fine actor Tim Roth, and then in a, 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 the other star, although in a much less significant role, is Charlotte Gainsbourg. And uh, the whole thing starts off at a wonderful beach resort in Mexico where uh, the two main characters, who are brother and sister actually, uh, and uh, the sister's uh, young adult children, uh, are having a lovely vacation and it's all very, very nice and the sun is shining and the music is playing and the water is sparkling. And then they get a couple of really, really sad phone calls. Apparently their mother, has, first of all, has been stricken very, very ill and then then she has died. So all this is the very, very beginning of the movie. They get this, you know, their, their, their idyllic vacation is interrupted by the news that the mother of the these two characters has died. And then... Uh, they immediately start to head off to the airport to get on the plane and come back home. Uh, they're English. And uh, turns out that the, the, the man, uh, his name is Neil, played by Tim Roth, ha has forgotten his passport. My gosh, it's back at the hotel. So, okay, the others continue on their way, and he goes back to the hotel to get his passport, except he does not go back to the hotel to get his passport. He simply starts lounging on the beach again. And it does not do anything about getting it. And every once in a while, his sister, Alice, calls up and says, where are you? What's going on? Oh, well, I had to go to the consulate about getting a new passport and we couldn't find my passport. But he's just lounging on the beach and hanging out. And then he meets a woman, a local woman there and starts hanging out with her. And you can imagine what develops there. So this is all very strange. What is going on here? Why is he behaving in such a peculiar way? Uh, and so as the movie goes on, for the rest of its running time, which, by the way, it's a very economical movie. It's well under an hour and a half, which is very rare nowadays. Uh, we discover more and more about him, and little by little by little, we discover what's behind this peculiar uh, behavior of his. And then eventually the sister Alex comes back and uh, she is with him again, and the two of them are interacting and so forth and so on. So that's what the movie is about. The movie is in large part a character study of the male character uh, played by Tim Roth, who, again, is just a, such a wonderful actor. But it's also more kind of a mystery, and we are just invited to puzzle over why he is behaving in this peculiar way. If he is simply planning to shed all his responsibilities in life and do nothing but hang out at the beach forever and ever, well, why doesn't he just say so? What's getting in the way of that? Uh, so as is very typical with movies that are about sort of a, a primal or primary um, uh, uh, mystery of human behavior, as the story progresses, little by little, bits of fact are dropped in that enable us by the end of the movie to understand what's been going on this whole time. And as is very often the case with movies like this, the more the mystery gets explained, the less interesting the movie becomes. And by the time I got to the end of the movie, I was thinking, well, now that was interesting while I was wondering about everything. But as things got explained uh, little by little, uh, I was wondering less. And uh, by the time we got to the end, uh, I'm really not sure all of this added up to very much. Another thing about this movie is that the two characters, the two main characters, uh, Neil and Alice, uh, are really, really, really wealthy. There's money everywhere. And that's another thing that kind of bothered me about the film. That turns out to be related to what's going on in the plot. But my gosh, 
they're so insulated from any sort of the ordinary problems of life by all this money. It's just like this huge cocoon, this huge cushion around them that it just make, makes it hard for me to identify with people like that. I've never revealed this to you before, Jill, but I am not loaded with money coming out of my ears. And sometimes when I see movie characters who are, uh, I just say to myself, well, now I can't really identify with them quite as powerfully as I would identify with good bourgeois folk like myself. So I really liked the acting in Sundown, and I really enjoyed it while it was very mysterious. But again, as time went by and it got less mysterious, I just kind of found it less interesting. Then again, you get to look at a lot of sparkling water and a lot of shining sun, and that part of it is very pleasant, especially in the wintertime. So I liked Sundown, but I can't say it's a movie I would recommend very highly. If you're in the mood for something offbeat and economical, then go for it. Otherwise, you can probably afford to skip it. Our second movie for today, Playground, is oh so different in every way. Uh, the, this, this is a Belgian film, and the original French title of it is Un Monde, A World. And that really describes it. The, the, the word playground describes it as well, too, because it's about school children. And while some of the movie takes place in the schoolroom, uh, a great deal of it plays, takes place in, in the school playground. I think more of it probably takes place in the playground. So it's very much about a playground. And uh, the playground and the school in general are obviously metaphors for microcosms for the world at large. Because what we're seeing are real world uh, human psychological, sociological problems uh, being played out in this mini miniature form of the playground and the schoolroom among children. Now, as I said, this is a Belgian movie. It was written and directed by Laura Wandel. Uh, and here's what it's about. Uh, it's about a little girl named Nora who, with her brother, her older brother, Abel, goes off to a new school. Uh, the father drops them off. The father, it turns out, uh, is the one who is the primary caretaker of the kids, which becomes a kind of an issue in the movie because the kids feel a little self-conscious. Why doesn't he have a job like other fathers? Well, we never quite get an explanation for that. But he seems to be a very good caretaker. He, he drops them off. He picks them up up uh, when trouble uh, raises its head, which it definitely does when he can. He intervenes and he's there and he's comforting and he's a nice fellow. But he is a minor character in the movie. The main characters are these two children, Nora and Abel. And the trouble is that Abel starts getting bullied by the other children. So again, they're at this brand new school and whereas Nora settles in pretty quickly, at first it seems it might not be so quick. At first it seems like she have, might have trouble making friends with the other kids. They might have trouble accepting her. She settles in pretty well. But Abel, the older brother, and they're both kids, uh, but he really, really has trouble and he starts getting bullied and the other kids don't like him and they do very nasty things to him. So Nora, being a little girl, even littler than her brother, uh, she, she tries to do something about this and every once in a while she'll go to the teachers and stuff like that. But he is very self-conscious about being bullied. Uh, he's very upset about being bullied. He doesn't want anybody to intercede in this. He just wants to be left alone by everybody, including the grown-ups, who are very minor figures in the movie. And so that becomes the main tension of the movie. We have Abel being bullied, and we have Nora settling into school and making friends and this and that, and trying to do something about it, and definitely being incredibly concerned and worried and upset about her brothers being bullied. But there's just not much she can do. She, after all, is just a little kid. And Barry minor incidents happen along the way, but that's the general thrust of the movie. Now, here we have another very economically made movie. This film, Playground, is well under an hour and a half. Uh, and I, that's just so welcome to me. <laughs> so many movies now are so much longer than they need to be. I love long movies, but not when they're longer than they need to be. And both Sundown and Playground, with their nifty little one-word titles, uh, are also very, very economically made. Uh, so I really had a good time watching Playground. And another interesting thing, about, well, I'm not sure good time because it's very upsetting in some ways. But another thing about this movie is the style of it. There are a couple of very, very great Belgian filmmakers. In fact, they're brothers. In fact, they're twin brothers. Their names are Jean-Pierre Dardenne and Luc Dardenne. And they are almost certainly the most important Belgian filmmakers of the past few decades. And they have a very distinctive style, the Dardenne brothers do. Their camera tends to stay very, very close to one main character throughout. 
and around the edges of the frame or the edges of the screen, the edges of the image. We see all kinds of other things happen, but the camera is very, very close on that main character pretty much all the time. And that is exactly the style in which Playground is made. So it's obviously really, really strongly influenced by the Darden brothers. However, it's really, really well done on its own. It's a, a superb example of that style being wielded really, really well. And the camera is on that little girl character, Nora, most of the time, sometimes with her brother, sometimes with other figures, but mostly with Nora. And Nora is played by a little girl whose name is Maya Vanderbeck, and she is incredibly good. And by the way, the boy who plays her brother, Abel, uh, whose name is Gunter Dure, he is also very, very good. So the acting is extraordinary to get performances like this out of children and performances that sustain themselves over the whole course of a feature film, even though it's a relatively brief feature film, is just an amazing achievement on the part of the director and writer, Laura Wandell, as is the camera work. It's just a beautifully shot movie. Uh, some people find this movie really disturbing because it's about little kids running into really, really serious psychological and sociological problems. There's no real resolution for it. There's nothing they can do about it. They're little kids. They just sort of have to go through things. But again, this is all a metaphor for the larger world that we all live in and the various issues that are touched on by the movies. Everything from sexism to homophobia to this and that are issues which are very much with all of us in the real grown-up world. So I found uh, Playground to be a harrowing film to watch, but a really beautifully beautifully done film to watch and I just found it engrossing and riveting and it's definitely the best movie so far in this new year of 2022 and I wouldn't be surprised if it ended up on my 10 best list about a year from now so Playground highly recommended if you can take it and the final movie today Jill again really really different Who We Are A Chronicle of Racism in America this is a documentary and it is made by two filmmakers, Emily Kunstler and Sarah Kunstler. And as their last name might give away, they are, in fact, the daughters of the legendary civil rights attorney, William Kunstler. Uh, but they are filmmakers and they have their own film company and they specialize in films that deal with social justice. And Who We Are, A Chronicle of Racism in America is very much a film about social justice, as the title and subtitle suggest. Uh, the main character of this movie, and he is a character, is a guy named Jeffrey Robinson. And this movie is basically an illustrated lecture by Jeffrey Robinson. He is on the stage of Town Hall in New York City, and he is giving a lecture to an audience. But the lecture is illustrated all the way through, not only by the slides and clips that he puts on the screen behind him, but by other things that are interpolated into the movie along the way. So we have here a film which is an illustrated lecture and also a movie of that lecture that goes beyond that lecture from time to time. Time. And it is all about racism in America. Uh, Jeffrey Robinson is a lawyer, as it tells us at the very beginning, the movie does. Uh, and uh, he regards this as the most important case that he has to argue. Uh, he talks about how he became aware. Uh, he's a middle-aged man, and he became aware, I guess, as he got into middle age. There were all kinds of things about American racism which he didn't know, even though he's a lawyer with a fabulous education and all of that. So he started looking into these things, and what he found out disturbed him and stimulated him so much that he felt he had to share this with the rest of the world. And that's why we had this movie. Uh, it's very, very similar, if you want another movie this is like, uh, to the Al Gore movie, uh, An Inconvenient Truth, which dealt with, with global warming and climate change, and which was also very much an illustrated lecture, very much in the vein of who we are, a chronicle of racism in America. So that's the kind of movie that it is. And along the way, there are just some amazing, amazing things which were new to me, or at least I was reminded of, uh, that were really quite fascinating in which the, 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 the accumulative effect of this movie is that America has been and really remains a profoundly racist place. Now, as, uh, as Robinson really, really emphasizes, you can hold different views in your mind at the same time. And America is really a wonderful, fabulous, terrific place in all kinds of ways. But that doesn't mean that there aren't also just basically atrocities that have happened in America and which continue to go on in America. Uh, one of the things the movie deals with, and it's fairly brief, but it's an important part of the movie, is the infamous Tulsa uh, ethnic cleansing of 1921, which is horrific. And the movie doesn't go into it all that deeply, and it kind of covers it fairly quickly, but it really is just a, a revelation as to absolutely how horrific something like that was.
and it was only about 100 years ago, which is not that long ago. And in fact, one of the people who appears being interviewed in this movie is a woman who is 107 years old, and she is a survivor of that violence, and she's still around and still alive, or at least was at the moment when this film was made. So these things in the past are not that far in the past, and they really, really have to be, have to be, have to remember them and learn from them. Other things that have been commented by others than, than me, uh, my gosh, one of the verses of the American national anthem, the Star Spangled Banner, is flat out racism of the worst, most horrifying kind. Uh, and we see some stuff about the Confederate monuments that are being removed and that sort of thing. So the movie deals with a whole lot of these issues. And again, it's really, really educational. I think that anybody who does not fully appreciate the tremendous and immediate and remaining legacy of racism in America really should see this movie. It's a real education. And I hope that a lot of people see it. For me, a lot of the stuff in it I already knew. And a lot of the stuff that I learned for the first time, there's so much like other things that I already knew that I wish the movie were a bit livelier, were a bit more original, that it made its points maybe a bit more succinctly. It's about two hours long. And after a while, I was just saying, well, you know, I can take in just so much. But again, I certainly hope that people who are not aware of the enormous impact of race in the history of America and in the present day of America, just go to see this movie and focus on it and think about it because it is well worthwhile. And those are my all things cinematic for this week, Jill. For which we thank you as ever and always, David Sterrett. Films in Focus, the films Sundown, Playground, and Who We Are, A Chronicle of Racism in America. <laughs>